Sometimes we like we in this position where we want to give our kids what we did have. But sometimes we forget to give our kids what we did have. You know, and stuff like compassion, stuff like generosity, uh, stuff like respect. We have to make South Africa better. We can't depend on someone else. A human being is extraordinary. A perfect machine that can achieve it all. But a South African. Now we are exceptional. We have broken boundaries. We have fought for freedom. Just like you, Prof Med is proudly South African and stands behind each professional striving to make a difference. Today we're in the quaint town of Fishhook to meet another incredible South African. Dr. Desmond Murphy's story is one of both resilience and determination and an inspiration to us all. Let's go meet him. Dr. Desmond, thank you so much for sitting down with me today to tell me about your incredible story. Um, one that I think is, is important. And uh, to, to start off our conversation yeah. today, where did it all begin? Where did you grow up? I grew up in um, a little town called Bridgetown, which is on the Cape Flats, Athlone, Cape Town. Um, and that's during the 60s. Um, we four, four together, I'm the eldest, uh, two brothers and one sister. So it was quite a, it's a small two bedroom house that we grew up in. And it was a, a lovely community, close knit. Uh, everybody helped each other. You didn't feel like you were missing out. You use those words specifically, yeah. missing out. Yeah. You, you grew up without, right? What is, yeah, yeah. Okay. I often say, when people ask me, I say, you know, I, I grew up in a sense poor yes. in the surroundings, but I think it's more, it's actually sad, more sad if you're poor in the mind when you grow up. Yeah. So my, my dad moved 22 times. So that time it was the Group Areas Act and he, yes. he moved that, uh, had to be moved from place to place and then eventually ended up in Bridgetown, which is on the Cape Flats. And every June holidays we used to go to Steenrust Dam with some other families. And when we came home from, from Steenrust Dam, we passed the beach in the Strand and we often said, oh, let's stop here, we're going to jump out. Gonna... And my dad said, we couldn't. No, couldn't. Not, you're not, not allowed, allowed to. to. Because it was whites only, you know. So there was a kind of a wakening up of that, you know, uh, about that. And then also after a while you thought, what, what do you do to correct that? Families played yeah. a huge yeah. role yeah. In, in your existence, in your life, yeah. added more values. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about yeah. that. So, so family is important to me because I think it's not by charge that you placed in the family. You know, I mean, you in your family and I'm in my family. It's not, that's not just a chance. There's a reason why you're there. So I'm the eldest in my family. And so I, I try and inspire them. I try to encourage them. I try to bring us all out. And when I was in grade eight, so that's then six, I, I sort of walked across the field and there's a park. And I stood on the back was the school and in the front I saw, my, I saw the house. And there was just that moment in time where I stood and I said, this is, this can't be it. This, this can't be what you intended to be and intended to have. And I stood and I just said a prayer and I said, God, please get me to university and allow me to build my mom and dad a house and I'll serve you the rest of my life. From that moment, I just knew I was going to dedicate myself to somehow get to university. Education was always important to me, so I always wanted to, to make sure that I got a good education. But the problem was there wasn't many resources at that time. The school never had access to a library. So when I, I matriculated in 1981, I always wanted to be a doctor. And this lady sat there, everybody got a chance to speak to her, and then she asked me, what would you like to do? I said, now I'd like to one day become a doctor. And she said, all the things that prevented me from being a doctor. And I came away so discouraged from that, you know. And today when someone comes to me and they say they'd like to be this, I, I say go for it, you know. So let me ask you, um, after after hearing that news of all the things that you, yeah. the reasons why you yeah. couldn't become a doctor, yeah. how did you turn that around from, from being despondent yeah. to actively yeah. going 
to achieve yeah. this. So what, so what I did was I, I said, okay, uh, I can't, if that's not going to be my case, I think the first priority is to get to university. That's the first priority. And then from there, there's got to be a way. So my makeup is always, there's got to be a way of doing something. Don't tell me that you can't do it. I'm so reminded of Nelson Mandela who says that if people tell you it can't be done, you will be the first one to do it. Doc, what about, what about when that person said to you, you come from the gutter, yeah. you're going to stay in the yeah, gutter? Yeah, that, that was hard. Yeah. I think people are angry when we see someone trying to go. We don't encourage them. We start pulling them down, pulling them down and start saying stuff. And, and so you either believe what they say in the mind or you say, you know what, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to show you that what you think is not actually going to happen. So I have three practices, which I'm at obviously different times, but in the rest of the time we do have someone, the oral hygienist, who are in those practices to see patients. So the one is in Fishuk, the one that's in the um, Strand, and then we have one in Amanis. So all three of those practices are in places that before myself nor my dad would be able to be. For example, the Strand, like I said, we would travel to um, Stiemras Dam and then we would pass the beach and we couldn't stop at the beach. What I, what I love about your entire story is that, that you changed your own life yeah. and now you're changing other lives in yeah. the process. Yeah. Um, and that's beautiful giving back yeah. and, and what you say about it's our responsibility. Yeah. We, need, we need to be there. We need to roll up our sleeves. We need to be helping each other rise, really. So I'm involved in an ECD, Early Childhood Development Center. So important. So that, that is the, if anybody has asked me, where do you put your money today in education? I would say ECD. What sometimes gets me is the fact when the child is born and you hold the child in the arms, the child is alive with possibilities. I mean, that child can be the next president the next today in the South Africa. But as the child grows up, we sort of put limitations on the child and we say, no, you can't because we don't have this, we don't have that. And but so you, you're involved directly in, with yeah, the ECD in, in the community? Yeah. In, in the informal settlement, Masipungmele, we put up a five million rand um, facility, state of the art facility. Then at church, in the Southside Church, I'm, the, I'm heading up the education program. What do they say? Success is not an overnight thing. Yeah, yeah. It takes time. It takes time. And it's hard work. There were times where I sat on the, on the bathroom floor and I just cried because I was in a situation where I, I just couldn't see how I was going to get up. And then, I, and then the next day, you feel a little better and you say, OK. And, and with regards to Prof Med, how did we, how did we sort of join with yeah, Prof Med? Yeah, so Prof Med, I, like always, I did my homework and I kind of looked at different things, spoke to some of my colleagues and stuff, so all of them. They're like, you know, you must go with Prof Med. Prof Med's the only way. So you go with Prof Med and that's how I, I'm with, and I've been with them, I can't remember how long, probably 2008 or before that even. Uh, and I've had no problems with them. My kids went and had their wisdom teeth taken out. We just filled out the form, went off. I had a trigger finger uh, and I was, for about three weeks, I couldn't use my finger and then I, they paid me out for that. So it's, so, so yeah, so I've, I've had just good, just good, good things. Good things for them, yeah. yeah. South Africa, yeah. complex country. Yeah. We have ups, we have downs. Every, every day is like another story. It's yeah. like a lucky packet. We don't yeah. know what we're going to get. What, do you, what message do you have for South Africans? Sometimes we, like, we're in this position where we want to give our kids what we did have. But sometimes we forget to give our kids what we did have. You know? And stuff like compassion, stuff like generosity. Uh, stuff like respect, uh, we forget to give them that and to say, you know, making a difference in someone else's life. So we want to give them all the things we didn't have, but we forget to give them that foundation. We have to make South Africa better. We can't depend on someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, Brent, you got to do your part. I've got to do my part. If I can make it better and be that light for the person that's next to me or wherever, where I can just impact on that person, the greatest satisfaction I get is when I, in education, when I sit across the table with a child and it is struggling with something and I explain to them and they understand and the light just, and you see it in their eyes, that they just, they get it. Mm, yeah. So I'm happy to say that my, my uh, Timothy and Gabriella, they know that. 
your light is so bright uh, from where you've come from to where you are going yeah. and what you're doing in yeah. between you are lighting up everybody yeah. around you yeah. and I, I i need to commend you on everything no, that you thanks, do thanks thanks so much it's absolutely yeah. incredible so doc uh we're we're where it all started yeah this is where you grew up yeah how does it feel to be back yeah it's like a lot of Memories come flooding back and emotions uh, and many of the families are still here and, uh, So this is our house. This one here? Yeah, this was our house here. Yeah. So before We had to look like I told you and then we built on. Yeah um, So my room was on the, just behind this garage My dad built a little shack and I sat there. And that's where you studied? And that's where I studied, yeah. And then this, the neighbors next door, they, we were kind of against them so on a Friday, they would be having parties and making a noise and they would see the light on and uh, I'd be studying and then the Monday would come and then they would say, oh, I saw you were studying and I'm so sorry that you had to uh, go through all that, that all the noise, noise and stuff and, you know, putting it mildly. When I qualified, the old man came around and he shook my hand and he said, congratulations, you know, so. You made it through the noise. Yeah, I made it through the noise. On the one hand, it was a struggle for you as an individual to break out of what was happening around you and to not let the things around you affect you you know and to just, just hold your head up high and continue through but the community was a very close-knit community they cared for everybody you had a sense where everybody struggled together and um, um, going through life like that i think the goal of us is to be significant in the world so that when you have something it's not for you but it's to share for those around you and to make sure that they better because of you you know and it's hard to believe that this is where it started and we are now. now yes so you you pushed forward your parents house did you build them a yes house? i built a house in 2010 we built them a house a big house in in kirsten uh, a four bedroom house you know my mom cried you were saying they all cried, you know. Well, Doc, you are an incredible inspiration. Uh, thanks. And, and spending today with you, I'm absolutely yeah. in awe okay. of what you have achieved. I, I'm, I'm proud yeah. of, of where you're going and, and what you're doing for the future generations. Yeah. Yeah. I want to thank you. Thanks. Thank thanks you so, so much. much. Thanks. Thanks very much, Fred. What a beautiful interview. In the words of Dr. Desmond Murphy, be happy where you are, but keep moving forward. Another incredible story in the We Are South African series.